Okay, and we are live, Kadal amigos. Hope everybody is well today and here today with another live stream, as usual, coming from Madrid, Spain. Now, the first piece of news that we'll look at today, this one here. Spain rejects criticism over slow spending of EU recovery funds. Spain has brushed off corporate concerns about its management of billions of euros of EU recovery funds, insisting it has reached cruising speed in developing investment plans and would, make, and would meet strict audit standards to secure its next batch of money. The country was the first to receive a payment from the EU's pandemic recovery funds last year and is due to receive a total of €140 billion, Euros, making it the bloc's second biggest recipient after Italy. But Spain's experience has been rocky, highlighting the uphill task countries face in managing the 800 billion euro program, which aims to repair damage inflicted by COVID-19 and make economies greener. Nadia Calvino, Spain's Deputy Prime Minister and Economy Minister, insisted its plans were on track and dismissed complaints that funds were being doled out too slowly. So there has been a fair bit of criticism in the press recently about the use of these European Union recovery funds, a lot of money on the table, of course, and a lot of money for Spain to change its economy, which is the objective of the European Union, to make Spain a greener economy. They're uh, throwing money at uh, different town halls around the country to try to get them to change the uh, style of the cities, make them more bike-friendly. We saw the other day an article saying that uh, Spain is becoming a, a bike-friendly country bike lanes going up all over the place. Uh, another question is whether people will use the bike lanes because as we know, a lot of people here in Spain don't use uh, transports like bike to, to go to work every day. They prefer to travel by car. Maybe at the weekends, people will use the bike lanes, but during the week, that's another story. So we'll see in a few years' time whether it has been a good investment or not. And also these low emission zones that are becoming more and more common around Spanish cities with more than 50,000 people. Uh, old cars are being forced out of the system. If you've got an old diesel car or an old uh, petrol car, uh, your days are numbered with that if you live in a city. If you live in a small town, it's another story. But if you live in a city here in Spain, days are numbered uh, if you have one of those cars. So moving towards that green economy. And as I said, there have been some uh, questions being thrown at the government recently about whether or not they are spending the money or uh, where the money's going and if it is being spent quickly enough because more apparently is on the way. So interesting. We'll see what happens there. All right, second piece of news today. And uh, the first conviction in Spain for spreading fake news. A civil guard accepts 15 months in jail for defaming uh, menace, sorry, with a fake video. Fake news, just fake news. That's right, fake news, just fake news. The tweeter, JJM, accepted a sentence of 15 months imprisonment and a fine of €1,620, Euros, in addition to not being able to work as a teacher for five years, but for publishing and disseminating fake news with the aim of defaming vulnerable groups, in this case, unaccompanied minors. The word mena that we saw before, meaning unaccompanied minors, people that come to Spain without the uh, without their parents, basically. The defendant admitted in the trial to disseminating a false video on social networks that made a mena out to be the perpetrator of an assault that had in fact taken place in China. Specifically, the defendant committed a crime against fundamental rights and public freedoms, and according to the prosecutor, he acted motivated by his animosity and rejection of foreign immigrants of Moroccan origin, when on the 1st of July 2019, he published a video that he claimed corresponded to a rape that had occurred days earlier in Canet de Mar. So the first conviction for spreading fake news. And uh, as we can see, a police officer, a civil guard officer with a hate of North Africans, Moroccans in this particular case, and especially the Young Moroccans that uh, come to Spain without their parents, uh, they cross over in boats or on um, trucks or however they get here, and uh, no parents in sight. They're all around 11, 12, 13, 14 years of age. They come here because their parents, uh, I think, send them looking for um, a better life for them because, as we know, in Morocco, there are uh, parents, uh, people still have big families. Here in Spain, that is not the case. So they come to Spain looking for more opportunities than they get in Morocco. And uh, as we can see there, some people don't like it and uh, creating fake news stories around it. 
and a police officer, as we said there. So another example of fake news. Fake news. Just fake news. That's right, Donald. Fake news. Just fake news. Third piece of news. The transport workers who brought Spain to a standstill in March are calling a new indefinite strike from Sunday. The Platform in Defense of Transport, the grouping of self-employed and small freight transport companies that paralyzed the country for 20 days during the strike last March, has announced this Monday a new indefinite nationwide strike for midnight next Sunday the 13th. The new protest is due to the failure to comply with the agreements reached by the main associations with the Ministry of Transport, Mobility and Urban Agenda to alleviate the situation of the sector and the increase in costs due to the rise in the price of fuel. In particular, they denounce the repeated violation by companies that hire their services of the law prohibiting truck drivers from working at a loss or below cost in the absence of control in its application due to the lack of inspections. So truck drivers, they're complaining that they're working for at a loss or below cost because there's no controls in place, companies taking advantage of their services and uh, agreeing to go on strike again. And if you remember back in March when that last uh, transport workers strike took place, there were some problems on uh, supermarket shelves, problems getting milk, problems getting uh, some other uh, essential items like that, eggs and things like that, uh, were uh, missing for a while there in the Spanish supermarkets. They were rationed, I think, even there for a while. And uh, hopefully that's not going to be the case again, or hopefully it won't be as severe and the government can step in and uh, see if they can uh, talk these people out of going on strike. But um, the other aspect is that the retail sector in Spain is alarmed because Black Friday and Christmas are coming up when a lot of people do their shopping for Christmas, of course, taking advantage of the Black Friday sales. And we can see here that unless there are last-minute surprises, the early hours of Sunday the 13th to the 14th on Monday will mark the start of a new indefinite national strike. The situation may be even more serious now on the eve of two key consumer campaigns in Spain, Black Friday, which has boosted e-commerce logistics, and the Christmas season, a time of big purchases. So... We'll see. And no doubt this is the objective of these transport workers to uh, put pressure on various sectors so that the government does cave in to their demands and uh, doesn't disrupt this busy retail sector. Because as we know, if you're here in Spain, you would have seen lots of Black Friday sales up already. In fact, it's not only a Black Friday day anymore, it's more of a Black Friday month. And a lot of small retailers are complaining that the uh, big retailers are just too aggressive with these uh, discounts over this period because I think uh, originally it was only one day, Black Friday, whatever day that was, uh, but now it's turned into a month of discounts and the big retailers, as I said, the Media Marks, the Corte Inglaises, the Leroy Merlins, all of the big retailers uh, are very aggressive in the month of November uh, with the discounts and uh, small retailers, as I said, complaining. But anyway, now the word of the day related to the, to the uh, general topic, which is strike, huelga. Examples, el transporte vuelve a la huelga, transport strikes again. So a common word here in Spain. And if, you read, if you're reading the press at the moment or watching the news on a daily basis, the word huelga will come up very, very frequently indeed because not only are we going to have a transport strike next week, We've got a doctor's strike in Madrid from the 21st of this month. Renfe, the uh, rail operator, had a big strike yesterday. Various airlines are striking as well. So strikes galore in Spain. The unions uh, are, are calling people to uh, take to the streets. Uh, I think it's. Um, I think they're threatening uh, uh, some type of a rebellion if wages are not increased. So chaos for the Spanish government at the moment, and uh, we'll see how they we we'll see how they uh, we'll see how they deal with it. But uh, bad times here in Spain. Now, first uh, comment. Let's have a look from Martin. Hola, Stuart. Muchas gracias por el video. Prices are rising everywhere. Yes, that is true. Going to Turkey tomorrow for two weeks. Did some research, and one lady said that a lot of prices have doubled, closing the world down for a couple of years. Near enough has its consequences. Very true, Martin, very true. Shutting the world down because of COVID has had its consequences, as we can see with the uh, rising costs at the moment because of the high inflation and government struggling. But let's be honest, they printed a lot of money back in the day and uh, now it's having the due effect. And uh, we're all in the same boat when it comes to high inflation, unfortunately. 
Another comment. Let's have a look at this one. Vanessa, the Spanish must keep the siesta. It's part of the culture. I am English living in Spain and look forward to my afternoon siesta for about an hour. Recommend them now. It's a complete myth saying people can't sleep at night as they have a siesta. Equally saying eating late causes digestive problems. Spanish, Spanish have always eaten late and they don't seem to suffer. So many English here will not adapt to the Spanish culture and want to bring their lifestyles from the UK over here. It's rather sad as they are missing out on life here. Yeah, I think this is related to the uh, siesta issue that we spoke about yesterday. Um, somebody asked if here in Spain the siesta is still common. I said that in big cities, not really. Uh, in some other parts of the country, maybe in the provinces, in some of the smaller cities, the provincial capitals, maybe, because people can get home for um, from their jobs easily. Whereas here in Madrid, it's normally uh, for a lot of people, it's a, it's a it's a serious commute, whether by car or train or metro or something like that, and people prefer to have a shorter lunch break and get back to work and finish early, which is logical. But in some of the smaller cities, country towns, of course, when the business is shut down during that two or three hour period, uh, it is common for people to go home, have lunch. I don't know whether they sleep because obviously I don't have a window into everybody's home, but. Maybe they just have a long lunch. Uh, maybe they sit down on the couch, watch a bit of mid-afternoon TV after the news, and uh, some of them might not off. Don't know if they are working in one of those jobs that does stop. A lot of companies go all the way through nowadays. That's uh, not so common. But uh, it is interesting to see that person's point of view there. Vanessa saying that she has adapted totally to the Spanish way of life. And uh, the siesta is not the cause of sleep issues in this country, according to her and Spanish people don't have digestive problems because they have a late dinner. Now, let's uh, go back to the comments from previous videos. Let's have a look at this one here. From Julie, used to be in favor, oh sorry, Julian, used to be in favor of legalizing marijuana, but now living in the Netherlands, I see that there is a risk in turning your country into a narco state, as was warned by police chief Pieter Jap. Allersburg. There we go. So Julian not in favor of the legalization of cannabis, which we've, all, which we've also spoke about um, a bit in recent times, given the amount of huge drug busts that have been taking place here in Spain recently. And a lot of the cannabis that is um, uh, captured in those raids is for uh, northern European markets. So it's grown down here in Spain and sent to the north of Europe into countries like, no doubt, the Netherlands or Germany or uh, further countries to the north uh, because they don't have the growing conditions, obviously, that Spain has and uh, the um, the output capacity that obviously Spain seems to have. Uh, but there's always two sides to the story. Some people are in favor of legalizing marijuana. There were a few other comments from people in the States saying that um, uh, revenues are up in some states. Somebody said Washington state revenues are up 500 uh, million euros because of the legalization of marijuana. Other people saying that um, it can be positive if, if it's done correctly, but uh, this comment here from Julian saying that there is a risk that you turn your country into a narco state. Now, not sure what they mean by narco state, whether it's you know like um, the situation in the country like Mexico, where narco dollars have gotten into a lot of levels of the government, or whether it's to just the criminal gangs that are operating in a country like the Netherlands, not sure. But uh, you have to do it correctly, I imagine, if you're going to do it at all. All right, another comment. Let's have a look. One here from Tracy. Sad to say that Spain is dead to most ordinary British people or families unless you are a pensioner. After Brexit, Spain has made it almost impossible to work legally and absolutely impossible to become a resident. I saw this comment here from Tracy and I just had to reword it a, a touch. So it's sad to say that Spain is dead to most ordinary British people or families unless you are a pensioner. Brexit has made it almost impossible to work legally and absolutely impossible to become a resident. It's got nothing to do with Spain, uh, Tracy. Spain is just putting the rules in place that, are, that have been there for all third countries up until now. When I first came to Spain from Australia, which has never been part of the European Union, even though we participate in Eurovision in the Eurovision Song Contest, for whatever reason, I've got no idea. But uh, I don't think Spain will, uh, Australia will ever become part of the European Union. Therefore, we have to go through third party rules and regulations to move to a country like Spain. And they are exactly the same as what the UK uh, have to put up with now. And uh, it's not Spain, it's 
leaving the European Union. It's as simple as that. So thanks, Tracy, for your input, but I just had to correct that there. Thank you very much for your participation today. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks to everybody that uh, uh, wrote something in the chat section. Good to see, and I'll see everybody on Thursday at the same time. Hasta luego, hasta entonces. Adios.